अर्पल आपके साथ Ekmax still with us here on markets today a dramatic recovery is what we saw in the last hour of trade the penultimate rather the penultimate trading session of calendar year 2022 with that we'll talk about all the other headlines that we're tracking today credit growth won't be impacted by rising interest rates given strong demand and perhaps a likely peaking of inflation that's the word coming in from the largest banker of the nation SBI chairman uh, Dinesh Kumar Khara spoke to CNBC TV 18 today and said that the comeback of contact services post covid will be a big driver so what we have witnessed in the current year in terms of the improvement in the quality of the bank books i expect that the same trend should be continued in the coming year too the reasons are very clear because the kind of growth which we have seen is essentially riding on the growth of the economy which we have registered when the rest of the globe is looking quite dull perhaps india is a shining star i think uh, my expectation is last quarter of course we saw a very healthy loan growth which was to the extent of over 20 21% but going forward it will probably taper down a bit but i still expect that 15 to 17% is something which should be a reality when it comes to chunky recoveries perhaps may not be there because all those low hanging fruits have already been plucked but at the same time there is a definite improvement in the ecosystem as far as the recoveries are concerned but still because of these enabling environment uh, it would be possible to affect recoveries there also so i would say that uh, uh, in in terms of quantum it may not be as high but still we would see some kind of recoveries coming in with the help of OTS etc and i think uh, that will uh, it will be some kind of a i mean pace of improvement may not be as high as we saw last year but uh, still i would i would say that there would be some incremental improvement as far as the asset quality is concerned all right uh, let's talk about the other headline uh, which is shriram finance the stock slipped in today's trading session by almost 6% in fact at one point was down almost in double digits as well uh, 17 crore new sh- shares were issued into the dmat accounts of uh, shareholders this as a result of the merger of the group companies so that caused uh, a bit of an excess supply situation in the market vivek joins in with the details of that one vivek so shriram finance uh, clearly taking it uh, you know taking it on the chin today now what actually happened is that yesterday uh, the shares or the shareholders of shriram city union finance actually got the shares uh, into their dmat account so almost 17 crore new securities are available for transactions from today and on the account of this you know significant supply that's been added to the stock you know you're seeing some amount of supply pressure or supply overhang uh, now remember you know today cash as well as futures volumes are very very high and we also under stand from you know analysts as well as some of the dealer sources that there is significant amount of selling pressure also being seen from arbitrage funds who are playing for that particular event in addition to this particular development what we understand is that two of the larger shareholders you know both piramal enterprises that owns almost 8.34% stake in the company and also tpg india that holds a little over 2.5% stake in the company in the past they have indicated their desire to cash out or to sell their stake from the shriram group and analysts believe that this now acts as a overhang for this merged entity so overall you know a lot of selling pressure and you know till the time some of the a clarity emerges on some of these events you could see some pressure continuing take that point uh, thanks a lot for that vivek uh, spandana spurti let's stick with the financial space itself and it about 2% higher after selling stressed loans worth nearly 320 odd crore rupees to an asset reconstruction company abhishek kothari joins in Uh, well mfi continue to sell their stress loans to arc we have seen in the recent past so spandana spurti has also sold uh, some of its stress assets uh, to an arc worth about 323 crores so for this they have rup- uh, received about rupees 95 crore on an upfront basis this is being done under swiss challenger method and if you take a look uh, this is one of the best rates that uh, they have got amongst peers as well who have recently sold their stress portfolio to arcs so jana small finance bank had sold uh, their stress to arc they received about 2.5% in august 2022 recently we had bandhan's news of selling stress uh, pool to arc they received about 9% of the loans and uh, spanna spurti on the other hand has received about 29.5% in terms of the uh, pools that they have sold out so one of the good rates that they have got and that is why the stock is seeing a massive gain in trade today back to you 
Vishak, thanks a lot for that. Uh, Bharti Airtel was the other stock which uh, saw a big, big rally from the lows, almost 8%, and that's big for an index stock. Uh, on the back of news that the company is looking to list their payments bank, uh, the stock, while on an absolute basis, closed with gains of 2%. There you see from the lows of 760, it moved all the way up to 820 odd rupees. Uh, Reema Tendulkar joins in with more details on that one. Reema. Thanks so much for that. So as you pointed out, what we've learned is that Bharti Airtel is looking to list the payments uh, bank. Uh, as of now, no details known about the timeline, but we're here to quickly tell you a little bit more about Airtel Payments Bank, which is currently housed in uh, Bharti Airtel. Now, this is a payment platform, so very similar to your Paytm as well as Fino Payments. Uh, the services they provide are savings and current account, insurance, doorstep banking, payments, debit cards, etc. Airtel has about a 70% stake in Airtel Payments Bank, and one of the big benefits that Airtel Payments Bank offers to uh, Bharti Airtel is that it helps reduce the churn for its subscribers. But where Airtel Payments Bank scores over its peers, as I said, its peers include the likes of Paytm as well as Fino Payments Bank, is that Airtel Payments Bank is the only profitable fintech in the industry. And they also have access to Bharti Airtel's unique uh, users across their digital assets. So as I said, it's the only profitable fintech in the industry. So a quick word about their financials. Annual revenue run rate is now roughly 1,200 crore rupees. The EBITDA margins as of the Q2 quarter September ending was 4.7%. It is profitable. They have more than 50 million monthly transacting users. Monthly transacting users are basically users who have at least made one successful uh, transaction in the month. If I have to compare it with Paytm, because that's the other listed uh, you know, entity over here, and it's a well-known one, now, payment, uh, Paytm is much, much bigger than Airtel Payments Bank. Its size is close to six to seven times that of Airtel Payments Bank. So whether you look at the gross merchandise value, GMV, or you look at the revenue run rate, the quarterly revenue run rate for Paytm is more than 2,000 crore, while for uh, Airtel Payments Bank is roughly 300, a little more than 300 crore rupees. But where payments, Airtel Payments Bank scores over its peers is the profitability. Look at Paytm Bank's loss in the quarter gone by in the September ending. It had a loss of more than you know, 570 crore. In comparison, Airtel Payments Bank is profitable. It's been seeing a healthy double-digit growth, 50 million monthly transacting users for Airtel Payments Bank. And now it appears that Bharti Airtel would like to monetize it as well. Back to you. All right, and finally, uh, because of the penultimate day of uh, 2022, let's end on something sweet. Uh, sugar se uh, sector, that was one of, uh, you know, the sectors of this year with uh, a mega structural change in the prospects looking bright for the sector even in the next year. So what's, uh, why is it in a sweet spot and what should investors watch out for in 2023? Surabhi is uh, standing by with all the details. Sugar industry is at the cusp of mega transformation. The government's initiatives to tie this sector with the need for clean energy is driving a structural change. Additionally, over the last few years, the government's initiatives have changed the fundamentals of the industry. The OMCs have issued multi-year ethanol tenders, which gives the mills long-term visibility. The government also increased the ethanol price in line with the FRP prices, which also increases the ethanol realization. Additionally, to encourage new capex in the distilleries, government gives loans at lower interest rates. In fact, this year itself, 228 ethanol projects have got loans of more than 18,500 crores. Sugar sector is primed for sustainable and green growth. The ethanol market is pegged to be valued at 16.5 billion USD dollars by 2030. To meet all the increased demand, the ethanol capacity needs to grow three times by 2030. Ethanol production is expected to increase to 1,500 crore litres by 2026. In this year itself, the ethanol capacity has increased to 947 crore litres from 680 crore litres in the previous year. Some of the listed companies are doubling their capacity in the next two years with a capex of close to 1,300 crores. Now the question, why ethanol diversion makes sense? Higher demand for ethanol and better realizations have ensured that the excess gain is diverted towards more profitable products. This makes more sense as well as it yields better returns. Increasing proportion of B-heavy ethanol, which is the co-product of sugarcane, have better ROEs as well. The ROE on new ethanol plants with B-heavy molasses is much higher at 146% versus direct route where it's only 47%. Also, the payback period is only two years versus five years. 
in the last 5 years the revenues from distillery segment has grown anywhere between 25 to 60 percent and the profitability has seen similar kind of growth. In the next 2 years as well the revenue is expected to grow at 15 percent CAGR and the profitability to grow in the range of 25 to 30 percent. With this, distillery will contribute close to 50% of the profits by FY25 versus 35 currently and just 9% in FY17. Diversion into ethanol segment also helps companies deleverage their balance sheet. In the last couple of years, the combined net debt of the sugar companies have increased by just 100 crores despite a capex of 1340 crores. Higher profitability also had a positive impact on the company's cash flow. The net debt to EBITDA is likely to see a significant improvement from its current levels of 1.3 times in the next two years. The sugar sector appears to be powering forward with sustainable growth which would eventually re-rate the sector. Eventually re-rate the sector indeed and we saw today as well a big move on all these sugar stocks. What was earlier cyclical is perhaps now getting structural. That's the view coming in on the sugar stocks. Uh, thank you so much for that. So in fact, on that note, we'll take your leave, wrap up on this edition of Markets Today. Thank you for watching, but stay tuned to CNBC TV 18.